So Apple just launched the new M2 MacBook Pro and this over here is not the M2 MacBook Pro. This is actually the M1 MacBook Pro but by looking at them you couldn't tell them apart. Now I bought this three months ago. I got an extremely good deal on it. I saved around 2000 dirhams or around five or six hundred dollars from the list price that Apple sells this at. And now that the M2 MacBook Pro is out, you're probably going to get an even better deal on the M1 MacBook Pro. And I think these things are amazing machines. And so today I'm going to share my thoughts. This is not my laptop. This is my wife's laptop. I use a MacBook Air and I use the Mac Studio, which I have over here for heavier tasks. But I have done some extensive testing on this thing. And after using it for a couple of months, this is my thoughts about the M1 MacBook Pro, which is probably the best deal in tech right now. Let me just grab the previous MacBook Pro so you guys get a better idea. So this over here is the 2018 MacBook Pro. This one over here is the new 14 inch MacBook Pro. The old MacBook Pro actually feels thinner and it actually is quite a bit thinner so if you can see that over here i feel like the design of the new macbook pro doesn't feel quite as slick as the old 2018 macbook profile this feels a little bit more like sleek and low profile this one's a bit chunkier but you're getting a lot more in this laptop versus this laptop when it comes to ports performance you name it. With the new MacBook Pros, the M1 and the M2, you get the 14 inch screen. And the screen's probably one of the best parts of this laptop because it is a beautiful resolution, up to 1200 nits of brightness. So it gives you really good HDR content. And the other really cool thing about it is 120 Hertz. You definitely feel it when you're moving around in the UI. It's not quite as noticeable as you feel on the phones. The 120 Hertz on the phone feels even more responsive, especially when you're using touch gestures. The 120 Hertz really feels more fluid. In this, it does feel more fluid, but not as apparently as it does on the phone. It just makes the laptop feel a little bit faster, which it is, it's a lot faster. Another interesting thing about the screen is the notch. So I'm not sure if you can see it on camera right now, but the notch is over here. Now it's almost invisible in day-to-day -day use and you get quite a bit extra screen real estate over here because the notch hides between your menu. And when you switch to applications that have a hidden menu or something like that, then the notch kind of disappears. They just black out the top of the screen. But I think this implementation is amazing. It's, it just gives you some extra screen real estate and it gives you a place for your menus to live. There's a couple of amazing things about this laptop. The battery life is phenomenal. 18 hours is what Apple claims. And from my wife's experience, she goes two, three working days without plugging this thing in which is pretty amazing. I think the last time she plugged this in was a day and a half ago and she's still got like 41% battery life and it's saying she's got six hours and 40 minutes of battery life remaining. So amazing battery life. This thing has really been performing and my wife doesn't really use this mildly. She has like hundreds of Chrome tabs open and you know, uses it professionally in a media and advertising situation. So she's opening big files. She's looking at complicated, uh, you know, illustrated drawings and things like that. And she's using this as an emailing and productivity tool. So definitely not stressing out the machine to its maximum. Like if you really want to stress this machine out, you probably want to do some video editing or high production photo editing. Um, you know, graphic design, 3D animation, those kind of things are going to stress this laptop out more. But, you know, for day-to-day -day tasks, this thing is absolutely brilliant. Now, a couple of cool things about the MacBook Pro, uh, you know, it starts at $2,000, but I picked this up for about $1,500. And now I think you should be able to pick this up for about $1,300, which is an insanely good price for this quality of laptop. A couple of things I really appreciate about this laptop is that it comes standard with 16 gigs of RAM. I have eight gigs of RAM on my M1 MacBook Air and very occasionally it stutters when I have a lot of tabs and stuff open. I don't use that for high productivity work, but I have even video edited on that machine quite successfully. So the M1 architecture doesn't need as much RAM as the previous generation did to perform well, but this one is 16 gigs of standard, so you definitely got more headroom over here 
to play with. The base model that this is, this is the M1 Pro, has plenty of performance. Like, um, you know, I'm running the M1 Max on my Mac Studio there. And do I notice a difference between these two laptops? Only slightly. Okay, even with the M1 Pro laptop, only slightly and those two in specialized tasks like when I'm exporting video because the M1 Max has dedicated video encoding, um, you know, chips inside the Max processor, you get much better performance there, maybe twice as fast. But this thing is amazing for most performance tasks because the CPU, the single core processing CPU power of this in the M1 Pro Max is identical. I was considering getting the Max for Mamta, but she wanted the 14 inch size and if you are thinking of getting the Max in the 14 inch size, just be aware that you're not gonna get the full performance of the Max processor because it is thermally restricted on this size of laptop. That goes for the M2 Max as well. It's not gonna work as well as the M1 Max on the 16 inch laptop or in the Max Studio. Another couple of amazing things about this laptop is Apple finally got the ports back on this thing. So you've got two Thunderbolt ports on this side and then you've got a Thunderbolt port an HDMI port and a SD card slot. So as a productivity machine, like this thing is amazing. With my laptop, I need to carry a bunch of dongles around, especially for that SD card slot. If you're a photographer, videographer, something like that, having an inbuilt high speed UHS to uh, SD card slot on these machines is absolutely amazing. And I do really like this 14 inch size, by the way, because it feels just the right amount bigger than the previous version. And the 16 is a bit bulky to carry around. You kind of lose a bit of portability. Just having this 14 inch size just seems like the perfect fit. Speaker system is amazing on this thing. It's loud, it's crisp, the bass is amazing. The trackpad on here is also beautiful. Similar trackpad that you get on the M1 MacBook Air and all the other Mac laptops. And gotta say, one of the best trackpads in the business. So the keyboard, I like the look of the black keys, but um, you know, the functionality of it, it's kind of difficult to decipher the different keys on this laptop. Now compared to the previous Apple laptop, like when you open them up, like this one definitely feels like sleek, like it's a bit more low profile. The keyboard on this is definitely not as good as this one. This one has more travel while you're typing, but the separation of the keys over here is just something I like about that visually compared to the all blacked out keyboard. And my wife kind of misses the touchpad that was there on the previous MacBook Pro. Uh, it's not there on the new MacBook Pros. And you know, there's something about the touch bar, even if there's no real functionality that you're missing over here from the touch bar, there are a few things, but just the aesthetics of it, like the way that the touch bar looks, it just gives it a bit more of a premium feel over here compared to this. But you know, like I'm willing to give up the trade-offs for the better battery life, the better keyboard feel for typing. It's uh, also got full size function row keys, so it's easier to hit those things. So I, I quite like the touch bar. You know, I never used one on a day-to-day -day basis. Month always had the MacBook Pro, I've always had the MacBook Air, but you know, it is what it is. Now, this one over here is the one terabyte model that I got for around I'd say $1,600, so I paid $100 extra for the one terabyte model, which I think was totally worth it because, uh, you know, these things fill up fast, especially if you're editing video. But if you want some extra SSD space that's super fast, this is the Sabrent Rocket SSD. Great for things like video editing or if you're dealing with large files. So I'm just gonna plug this in real quick and show you some final cut performance on this because it is blisteringly fast, even on this machine. There's 4K footage shot from my A7C over here. Pretty difficult codec, not the worst, but pretty hard for certain computers. So if I open my project file over here, as you can see, we have like tons of 4K clips, overlapping with color correction and a bunch of stuff going on. And this thing just goes through it like butter. Like, <laughs> It's so smooth and especially with this 120 hertz screen, like when you're scrubbing, it feels even quicker than my Mac Studio because, <laughs> because of the 120 hertz screen, it really feels so fluid. Like this thing is not missing a beat. Okay, some of it is pre-rendered, but 
you know, even I've tried editing on this before and it is just buttery smooth to like, it doesn't miss a frame when you're editing 4K footage on this thing. Like you can even uh, edit 8K footage on this quite comfortably and it's going to be amazing. So in terms of performance, the M2 MacBook Pro, which was just released, is about 20% faster in terms of CPU and 30% faster in terms of GPU. Will you feel that difference on a day-to-day -day basis? Probably not. This computer is extremely fast. So, you know, it's like going from zero to 100 and four seconds versus 3.5 seconds. Are you going to feel the difference? Yes. If you're going hard on the drag strip, maybe you'll feel the difference, but in day-to-day -day driving, you won't. Same way, this laptop is so fast already that a 20% bump in CPU, you're probably not going to feel it, at least not for the next four to five years. Like this laptop is extremely, extremely fast. The other key differences in the M2 MacBook Pro is that now they give you an HDMI 2.1 port which allows you to do 8K or 4K 120. So if that's something you need or you want, then you know what kind of person you are. You need that HDMI port. But otherwise, for most people, 4K 60 monitor output should be just fine. Now, this gives you the option to connect up with three external monitors to it because it's got three Thunderbolt ports. So if you really want to push this machine, you can. And there's one thing that the M2 version of this laptop does not give you. If you get the new M2 Pro with the base model, it's going to give you a slower hard disk than this. So this hard disk reads at about 6,000 megabits per second. Okay, close to seven almost, like six and a half thousand megabits per second. The new one, the 512 hard disk versions goes at about three and a half thousand, which is still really fast. It's just as fast as the MacBook Air, but not quite as fast as this one. So unless you upgrade the M2 Pro to the one terabyte version at least, then you get the same 6,000. But if you get the base model of this, the M1 Pro MacBook Pro is giving you 16 gigs of RAM, really fast 512 SSD, the amazing screen, the great speakers, the amazing typing experience. In conclusion, my wife Mamta is extremely happy with this laptop. I think if you're getting this thing for $1,300, $1,400, the 2021 M1 MacBook Pro, with the base specification even, I would highly recommend this laptop. It is such a good deal. And the only reason you might want to get the M2 Pro is if you really, really need the performance. But apart from that, you know, this laptop's almost identical with a slightly less powerful uh, processor inside it. But trust me, guys, you're not going to feel the difference. And if you are one of those people who's going to be able to tell the difference, then you already know you need the M2 Pro. For me, I have the MacBook Air and the Mac Studio. So that's a pretty good combination for me to have the thin and light laptop with the ultra powerful desktop setup. And that's how I like to work. But if you only want to have one computing device in your life, this one's it. Like this one definitely is it. All right, guys. So those are my thoughts about the MacBook Pro. Amazing machine. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. If you liked it, hit that like button, leave me a comment. It really helps out the algorithms. And if you like this video and you're here till the end, please hit that like button, leave me a comment, subscribe to watch more videos like this, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.